What you're looking at is a finished Docker file that's extending the official PHP image, and I use this as a foundation for my own images. This gives me everything I need to run a Laravel project, for example. This file serves as a roadmap, but getting to this final state isn't as straightforward as this list of instructions might look. There's actually an art to exploring inside of a container and building up this Docker file from scratch. And that's what we're gonna walk through in this video. So I'm gonna use the official PHP image. I find that it works for most of my projects and we're gonna look at using this as our foundational image and building on top of it for our own project. The documentation on this official PHP image is pretty solid. There's a lot of information here. All these, all these tags that you're noticing here and all of these different versions of the PHP image that we can use. We're specifically going to use the 7.2 stretch image to demonstrate but the same principles will apply to any of these images. So if we look a little further down, it shows us how we can use this with the command line and with Apache and different ways that we can use this image. Um, specifically, we're going to look at uh, how can we install more PHP extensions. Some extensions are available via Peckle, and so we'll look at that too. So first of all, we have an empty Docker file here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go from PHP and 7.2 stretch. So the way that we can go about starting to explore this image is with the docker run command. We don't even need to extend this. We can just run this from the command line and explore around before we even create our docker file. So if we run docker run, we don't need this container to stick around when we're done. So we're just going to remove the container when it closes. We want this to be interactive and we're going to use this PHP um, 7.2 stretch tag, and we're gonna run bin bash. Inside of here right away, let's just look at the PHP version that we're dealing with, and um, the file system. So this is a pretty typical Linux installation here that we're dealing with. If you go back to um, further in the documentation, we um, had these Docker scripts that come with the official PHP image. So let's first look at this one, docker php extension install. So if we just run this without any arguments, it will tell us the usage here. So we can install multiple um, extensions with one command call. For instance, um, in this example, installing the gd extension and the mysql improved extension, or the pdo and pdo mysql. But let's see what happens if we actually try to do something that fails. So let's just try to install xdebug and see what happens. So immediately we get um, an error here that basically says that this does not exist. So let's go explore this path a little bit and see what we have in here. Okay, so as you can see here, we have all of these extensions. Um, for example, PDO MySQL and PDO, like we saw in the example. So let's install these and see what happens. So we'll take PDO MySQL and we'll do PDO. Okay, so if we do phpm, let's just look at all the extensions here and see what happens. So now we can see we have the pdo and the pdo mysql. As a matter of fact, we should jump out of this container, and when we do that, it's going to basically give us what we started with. The container will be as if it's a brand new php 7.2 image. So to demonstrate, let's go back in here and Let's try to search for this uh, PDO MySQL, which we just saw, and it's not installed. So if we do docker PHP extension install PDO, uh, PDO MySQL. Now that's just done installing. Let's just try to do this grep again and see what we got. Perfect, now we're actually getting this module installed. So you can see that our command actually had an effect on that. So if we actually go back to this user source PHP, whoops, so now notice this is an interesting thing. Now this does not have our original path. In line with exploring this image, this is part of exploration and just figuring out how an image works. So before we were using this path to look at all of these modules that we could try to install, but they're not there anymore, which is kind of weird, right? So let's run docker php extension install and xdebug. Now if we go back here, look, these modules are here all of a sudden. Let's explore this script a little bit further. So now if we uh, run which docker php, 
extension install. Let's find out where this is. Okay, so let's go into this path here and let's look at this file. All right, so this is a bash script, obviously. And um, the thing of interest here that I wanna show you is um, this here. So we have this Docker PHP source extract. So it looks like we're running another command inside of this one. Let's go investigate this. So if I hit Q to get out of more and run which, Docker PHP source, let's cat this file just the same and see what's going on here. Okay, so it looks like the directory variable is being set to user source PHP, which is prefix of the ext folder that we're looking for our modules within. So if I jump down a little further, you can see that we're um, we're untarring the PHP source into that path. So that's how um, we're actually getting these modules. And in the end of the uh, last script that we looked at, if I go back in here and I run uh, cat um, user local bin docker php ext install. If we look at this a little closer, we'll see, you'll notice that uh, we're clearing this out. So after we're done running this command, we're gonna clear it out. The reasoning behind this is the actual end result or the image doesn't actually need this extracted information in the final result. It's just there for us so that we can install these extensions. Otherwise, we will make the image larger. So once we run these commands, it cleans up after itself basically is essentially what I'm getting at here. So we've seen a way that we can install extensions through the official PHP image. And next we're gonna look at um, doing a Peckle install. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to run Peckle install uh, xdebug. So first of all, let's jump back over to Firefox and I have Peckle here. And it looks like the latest stable is 2.6.0. So we're gonna go with that one. So we're gonna run peckle install 2.6.0. So xdebug, if I type phpm, let's just run the whole thing. Notice how we're not getting uh, xdebug anywhere in here. So there's another command if we go to the uh, user local bin. Let's just print out this whole thing. We have this um, extension enable. So first of all, let's go type PHP INI. Whoops, let's do that a little further up so you can see better. So let's go in here, user, local, Etsy, PHP. And let's just have a peek around in here. So in conf.d, we have an INI file in here. So let's, let's see what happens if we just run extension enable xdebug. Now it's thrown this uh, docker xdebug ini file in here. So let's just see what this has in it. It has one line and just enabling the extension here. So with the peckle command, we've figured out how to install xdebug inside of our image and then how to enable it with PHP. There's an extra step there in order to enable the actual extension. So with that in mind, let's kind of work on this image a little bit first. So. We're gonna have a run command here, and the first thing that we wanna do is we want to um, docker uh, ext, or whoops, it's docker php ext install. We want pdo, and we want pdo mysql. And then we're going to run peckle, uh, sorry about that, we're gonna run peckle install xdebug 2.6. Zero. And let's just verify that that's the right version. Yep. If I actually come back into the running container and type history, it'll show me um, the commands I've been running since the container has been running. So if you keep the container open, you can get a paper trail of your history here and see what commands you, you were running. So in this case, we ran peckle install xdebug 2.6.0. And then remember, in order to enable it, we actually had to run this command here. So let's do that here. Okay, so let's actually just build this image and um, at the same time, jump out of this container. So if I run docker build dash t 
explore PHP is what we're going to call it, and we're going to use the dot to say this is the context we're going to. I need to spell build correctly. So now it's building the image, basically automating what we've explored on our own uh, inside the container. Okay, so our image is done building, so let's just type in Docker images and see what we have here. It looks like I need to do a little cleanup, but specifically we're looking for this. So the same way that we did a Docker run, let's use our image instead. And we're gonna run bash. So immediately let's grep for xdebug inside of our installed PHP modules, and there it is, based on our Docker file. Let's check one more thing here. So if we type PHP INI, we'll notice a few things about our configuration. So the configuration file lives inside of user local etsy PHP. So let's look inside of that directory here and notice how we don't actually have a PHP INI file. I wanna show you a couple of things. So one thing we could do here is explore around in the container. Let's um, use our PHP command to figure out uh, Etsy PHP, and we're gonna do echo equals America Phoenix. And then we're gonna do um, php.ini. So now if we run php.ini, we have a loaded configuration file. So here we have our file that we just created and here is the default. So we can include our own INI file and customize some things. So let's go over here and let's create a PHP INI file. Could actually move this into a config folder. We could even further make it a PHP and just drop this in here. Back in our Docker file, we need to copy this in. So we're gonna do copy config PHP php.ini and we're going to drop it here. And before we run this image, I'm just gonna to prove to you that, uh, so right now we have this INI file loaded. If we jump out of the container and run back in, now if we do php-ini, we don't have a configuration file loaded because of the ephemeral nature of Docker. So let's take this new line and let's build a new version of our image and it automatically tags it as the latest when we run a Docker build. So let's just build the latest and that was really quick because this step was already cached and we're just copying in a simple file here. And in fact, we actually don't have anything. So let's do date uh, time zone equals America Phoenix. Okay, and we're just gonna Docker build again. And now if we do a Docker run, and let's just see if we actually affected anything. So if we do a grep for uh, date again, let's do this higher so you can see. So our time zone is set to America Phoenix by default now. The next thing we might wanna do is, um, let's say you're just needing to change a file or debug it. Um, if I type in vim, uh, user local etsy php, php.ini, Notice that we don't actually have the vim command. So we could, since this is a stretch image, we could do apt get install vim. And it's able, unable to load it, but if we do an apt get uh, update and try again, we'll be able to get vim inside of this session. Okay, so now if we look at our history here and then we just rerun, um, let's see, line five. So now we're in inside of Vim editing this INI file inside of our running container. And again, if I exit out of here and run it again, I won't be able to find Vim anymore. Okay, so like the last thing is, um, I, I showed you how you could install basically a, a stretch package inside of the image, but let's say that we wanted to have this in our Docker file. Maybe we have some dependencies 
for example, um, you know, maybe I want to look at some processes uh, while my container is running. So let's just install a couple packages. Now, um, since we're not changing these a lot, I usually stack them higher up in the container. Um, so let's just do that first. Let's start our dependencies first. So inside of run, we're going to do a new line here and we're going to run apt get update and just do the Y flag just in case. We need an and here. We're going to do apt get install y and we're going to run no install recommends install I actually like to put the flag here first and then on the next line we're going to run um, this proc ps so we can run the uh, ps and see the processes running and let's just throw vim in there and if we jump back out of here and try to build this image, let's see what happens. So docker build. So now you can see it's installing the packages that we just specified. Okay, so now that the image is done building, let's uh, run it again. So now we should be able to type which vim and we have vim in our path. And we should also be able to see what processes we have running. So this is kind of handy. I, you don't have to install these things. I'm just showing you an example of how you can kind of experiment with installing modules and then putting them into your Docker file if you need these packages installed. Um, and a better example could be like, you know, Nginx.